and Shrouded, a newly released survival action role-playing game by Keen Games. It launched at the end of January and is currently in early access. It quickly amassed over 2 million players and is continuing to grow. Keen Games has been extremely active in issuing hotfixes and openly communicating with its players on what content to change and add. I received and shrouded a couple weeks ago and I've managed to put in a little over 15 hours since then. The point of this video is to give you my first impressions and to help you decide on if you want to join in on this adventure. I'll release another video doing a full review once I've beaten the game's story. I'll preface this first impression by saying that Enshrouded is very similar to Valheim. So if you've played that game, you'll have a better understanding of this game's style. Personally, I did not enjoy Valheim, so I was a little skeptical about this game, but I did like the trailer, so I wanted to give it a shot. My experience so far has been extremely positive, and I have been playing this every chance I get in my very limited free time. Let's start with the story. This is not your typical story-driven RPG experience like The Witcher or Baldur's Gate. While you'll get some story from the quests, most of the story is discovered by exploring and reading books laid around throughout the world. I'll give a basic overview and obviously avoiding spoilers. The world of Embervale is being consumed by a fog called the Shroud. The Shroud ruins and corrupts everything that it touches. This includes people, animals, and the land itself. To combat the Shroud, the Flameborn were created, which is what you play as. The Flameborn can survive inside the Shroud, although only for a limited time. Your goal is to salvage the remaining untouched lands save other flameborn and to clear out the shroud. I personally haven't found the story to be really gripping, but I've heard that it does become more interesting the deeper you get. Overall, it's fine for what it is, it's just not something very memorable. Let me talk about the look of the Ember Vale world itself. I have really enjoyed the look of the game. It's not a graphically impressive game, but the character and enemy models all look okay. The overall environment and graphic style is super pleasing to look at. Every time I find myself at the top of a tower or a very large building, I do like to pan the camera around to just take it all in. So let's talk about the gameplay. The initial tutorial is very short and the entire world is immediately opened up to you once it's over. While I don't want a game to hold my hand like a little kid, I do wish it had some more indirect hand holding when it came to finding resources. In order to craft some essential items, I had to use Google and search where to find those specific resources. Since the game relies heavily on books for continuing the quests and story, I feel like that info could have easily been added into additional books, letters, or notes that are just found out while exploring. There aren't many restrictions to exploring and you can pretty much go anywhere that you want, which is good and bad. The good is that the world itself is very nicely crafted and you'll find yourself constantly intrigued and wanting to explore into the next area. The reason I say bad is because my overall story and game progression in the early stages was drastically slowed, just due to the game having that next exploration spot always within range. As I would be on my way to complete one quest, I'd see a village, a tower, or just something that made me curious. I'd veer off of the path and clear out that area to uncover its secrets. Once completed, I'd see another landmark and off I go again. Rinse and repeat. This isn't really a game issue, it's more of a player issue, and if you like exploring, it's something to be aware of. If I start a new game, I will stick to the main quests until I craft the grappler and glider and then really go off exploring. The map is quite large and Keen Games did a great job of ensuring that the world felt full. At no point have I really felt like traveling was a chore. There's enough interesting things scattered throughout that it makes me want to keep going. Even though I say the world feels full, I want to make a point that at least so far, in all my exploration, I have not encountered a friendly NPC. There are some friendly NPCs that you have to rescue, however, you place them inside of your home and they do not move. They're used for crafting and giving out quests. But even in a world with 99% hostile mobs, the world feels full and active. Let's talk about the Shroud. This is the fog that is consuming and corrupting the land of Embervale. It's an interesting mechanic. Portions of the map will be enshrouded. The area is easily identifiable since it's a heavy fog. Once you enter the Shroud, you have a timer that begins counting down. If this timer reaches zero, you die. The timer does add an additional level of anxiety and gives you a sense of urgency. However, the timer is generous and can be increased the more you level. The Shroud changes everything, so these areas have different mobs and resources compared to the normal lands. It's creepy and a nice change up while exploring. All right, so now let's talk about the combat. The combat in Enshrouded is pretty punishing, but extremely fun. This is not a hack and slash action RPG. If you run into the middle of a group of mobs and just try button mashing, you are for sure going to die. Even with full armor, your HP can quickly be drained to zero if you get caught in a combo attack or hit by a strong magic attack. You need to roll, block, parry, and learn enemy attack patterns. If you're like me and not used to this style of gameplay, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. I'm a very fast paced gamer and once I slowed myself down, I started to really enjoy it. I've started speeding up more as I'm learning what I can get away with in terms of attacking and blocking. Downing large groups of mobs feels pretty rewarding and the bosses are also satisfying to down. 
Bosses feel like bosses, they look unique, the music amps up, and they throw new abilities at you. The only real negative I have with the combat is that the targeting system can be kind of hit or miss. I've had multiple issues when I'm trying to lock on to the big melee target right in my face, and it snaps to a different mob that isn't even within striking distance. Overall, I wouldn't say this is a difficult game, it just punishes you for making mistakes. There are multiple combat styles, sword and shield, two-handed maces, bows, wands, staves. You can freely switch through different weapons while in combat, so you can constantly change things up depending on the situation you find yourself in. Shields do feel a little overpowered, as it should greatly deplete your stamina bar more than it currently does. Wands can be used with shields, and it is by far the most overpowered combo in the game. Two-handed maces are slow but damaging, swords feel just right, staves are also pretty strong but I feel like they are balanced decently. The magic system in Shrouded is interesting. You have a mana bar, and you have to use mana in order to cast spells. You can only cast spells when you're holding your staff, and if your staff has spell charges equipped. Spell charges are like ammo. You'll find spells like Firebolt, Frostbolt, or Chain Lightning. If you run out of charges, you are unable to use your staff until you find more. Overall, the combat system is a lot of fun. I would like a difficulty slider, but you can easily explore higher level areas if you really want a brutal challenge. If you want to just cheese the combat, you can also go that route. The combat experience is pretty much going to be whatever you want to make it. The base building and material farming. It's very easy to build a small village. The building interface is very user friendly and it snaps together pretty smoothly. I really can't think of any negatives here. Finding and farming for materials while tedious in every game, it's not as bad in Enshrouded. Most of the base materials you need for structures are easily located and not horribly time consuming to gather. Again, I want to reiterate that for more advanced stuff, I did need to navigate outside of the game in order to understand where to find or what to look for. Some final closing comments. The music in the game is great and fits the adventure game style that Enshrouded is going for. The mob variety is also pretty decent, however you will encounter a lot of the same mobs over and over. Everything respawns once you log out, which can be annoying if you don't create a new home as a fast travel point. Basically, if you log out with no home base near you, the next time you log on you're going to be doing a lot of backtracking and re-killing the same mobs. The game does have some puzzle aspects, which was a nice change of pace. They haven't been difficult, they just cause you to slow down some and to examine the surroundings. The game does have a multiplayer mode where you can join a world and play with other players, but I have not yet tried that out, so I can't really comment on it. Honestly, there are only three annoyances that I've felt with Enshrouded. One is the lack of information on resources. Two is everything respawning once you log out and then back in. And three, the lock on targeting issues. Overall, this has been a great experience and I'm going to keep playing it. I plan on doing a full review of the game once I've beaten it, so subscribe if you want to see that. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button to show some support. Shout out to these awesome channel members. I primarily cover World of Warcraft, but I might make a few more Enshrouded videos. I haven't fully decided yet. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. It's 99 cents a month and gives you early ad-free access to all of my videos. I'll see you in the next one.